here we go. I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisectors of our triangle. So I'm going to first draw a triangle. All right, so I have my triangle. Now I want to construct the perpendicular bisectors. All right, so what do I need? Well, first off, I need midpoints, right? Because I need to bisect those segments. So I'm going to construct the midpoints. Then I want perpendicular bisectors. So I want it to be perpendicular to this segment, and I want it to bisect it. So I want it to go through the midpoint. And now I'm going to construct the perpendicular line. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I want it to go through that point because I want it to bisect, and I want it to be perpendicular to that. Okay, great. You know, two points intersect at a point. That's not real significant. You know, point G here. That's not real significant for two lines to intersect. But now if we have a third, all right, again, I want the perpendicular bisector. So I want it to go through the midpoint, and I want it to be perpendicular. Now, when I get the third one to go through there, and that point there, that point there is called the circumcenter, all right? Now, do they always, no matter what kind of a triangle, are they always intersecting at that same point? And yes, they are. Okay. Now, let's take a look at what kind of a triangle we have. I'm going to look at these points. I'm going to measure the angles. That angle is 63 degrees, and that's angle A. So now I want angle C. That one's 54 degrees, and then I want angle, lastly, I want angle B. All right, so right now we have an acute triangle, okay? Now, here I have a right triangle. Notice where the circumcenter is. And then I have an obtuse triangle. Notice where the circumcenter is. All right, go back to acute. Where's the circumcenter? Okay, and it doesn't matter which point I'm dragging. Again, I have a, a right triangle. All right, that's a, bit, a little bit of rounding error, but notice where the circumcenter is. Okay, and then I have obtuse. All right, now. I'm going to get rid of the perpendicular bisectors here. I'm going to hide those lines. And I'm going to check these distances that we talked about. Construct the segment. Construct this segment. From the lesson, we learned that uh, the perpendicular bisectors are equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So let's take a look at those. Let's look at those lengths. All right, and yes, those lengths are equal. Are they always equal? No matter what kind of a triangle we have, are they always equal? Okay, yeah, they're looking like they're always equal, okay? Now, I told you this point has to do with the circumference and center of the circle. If you think about circumference, circumference is the distance around a, around a circle, right? Well, that means a circle is going around this triangle, all right, which means I need a circle, and I also said the center of the circle. So this is going to be the center of my circle, and then I am doing that. So if we take a look here, my circle now, which is green, is going through the vertices of my triangle, right? And it's always, these points are always staying on. The vertices are always staying on my circle, all right? Pretty significant there. So, what does that tell us about these distances? Yeah, they're all equal, but what could we call those segments there? They end up being what? Any ideas? They are the radius of this circle, the circle that goes through the vertices of our triangle. All right, so circumference goes around. So you think of the circle going around the triangle. And the center, that point, the circumcenter, is the center 
of the circle that goes through the vertices of that triangle. Okay? So, there's a construction of the perpendicular bisectors and the significance um, the significance of these segments to the circle. Okay? Thank you very much.